program is brought to you by UCKG. In the search for better chemical treatments to treat dependency, scientists from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, in the USA, are dedicated to developing procedures to identify and study small groups of neurons which are related to the craving of drugs. The study takes into consideration that associations trigger desire in the dependent to take drugs. When the dependent comes across something that reminds him about the drug, this small group of neurons is activated. Simultaneously, the memory of the drug is triggered and the person feels an uncontrollable desire for the drug. This results in the addict being unable to control his behavior and causing those who have been abstinent to relapse. Even though they are aware of the negative consequences which may include losing their job, or family, as well as health problems, says one of the scientists. They even add that today there is not a single effective medicine to cure addiction. That is why 70% of cocaine users relapse during a period of abstinence. Now when it comes to alcohol, the number is higher. 80% of alcohol users relapse. Carrie Fisher said she had relapsed one month before her death in December 2016. At 60 years old, she suffered a heart attack. One of the American actress's friends told the media that she was very unsettled and she had been fighting a battle against alcohol abuse and LSD for many years. She was also receiving treatment for bipolar disorder, depression and anxiety. For many, the process for the cure of a chemical or behavioral dependency includes ups and downs. Some health professionals see the relapses as normal. Is it normal to go back and forth with the same problem? A legal drug that is easily accessible with devastating power. Cigarettes were synonymous with glamour, status, and popularity. Smoking used to be so widespread that it would not be taken by surprise by the number of people who were smoking. But this symbol of sophistication and success has turned to ashes. In South Africa, advertising cigarettes on domestic TV and radio, newspapers, and magazines has been banned and smoking in all indoor workplaces, public places, government facilities, and other areas is not permitted. There are restricted areas throughout the countries, but the laws do not cure smoking. For those who would like to get rid of their cigarettes, the question is how? What can be done to erase nicotine dependency? There are nearly one billion smokers on earth. The habit kills over eight million every year. According to cancer research, smoking causes 50 different sicknesses, including heart attacks and lung cancer. Every hour, 23 people die as a result of smoking. Specialists say that some types of food like lettuce, tomatoes and papaya help to decrease the desire to smoke. The battle against tobacco is a battle to regain health. Tobacco causes dependency. It is considered to be an illness because nicotine is a dangerous and highly addictive chemical that transforms body functions. Hello everyone, and the last hit program is here again because we aim to reach those who are suffering with addictions. People, unfortunately, nowadays it has been even more common to find someone among our friends, among our family members, who unfortunately has been defeated by this problem, addictions. We have seen people getting sick. We have seen people getting, losing their families, losing their money, losing the perspective of life, becoming a different person from what they were before they started getting involved with this addiction. 
And I'm talking about all kinds of addictions, drugs, alcohol, gambling, and the list goes on. And maybe you are watching me at this very moment and you have a family member in your circle of friends or family members, you have one that has been a real problem for you. It has been influencing in your daily life. Your son, your spouse, you know, your grandson, one of them maybe has been trapped by this addiction and today, this addiction has been the reason of the suffering of the entire family. Maybe at this moment you look at me and you say, Ricardo, I am the one. Maybe you are the one. You said one day that you would never be trapped by this. You said one day that you would stop at any time. You said to yourself so many times that when I want, I can put an end to this and I just stop it. But today you look to yourself and you see, I have no strength. I have no strength to get rid of this. I have no cap capability of putting an end to this. And this exactly thinking on you that we are here because we do believe that you can put an end to this suffering as many they have done once they start using their faith. Watch with me. My biggest struggle started as a, at a young age. I was a young girl, 12 years old. I lost both of my parents. At the age of 17, I ended up getting married to the kid's father. Uh, we totally have six kids together. But in that relationship, there was abuse that went on. I finally went ahead and separated from him because I couldn't deal with the abuse anymore. And being a single mom with six kids is very hard. I end up on drugs, addicted to marijuana, depressed. Basically, I just stayed in my room all day smoking. I was going through not only losing my home, but I was under a spiritual attack as well. I was watching television one Sunday morning and I saw the bishop on the television and he was just speaking out, you know, saying that if you're going through any type of depression and you're needing some help or healing, just give us a call, let us pray for you and let us help you. But when I came to the Universal Church, we didn't only pray, but he laid hands on me and he put his hands over my head and he prayed for me and it was just like peace and I was still smoking marijuana I got the blessed water once I left the prayer service I went home and I started drinking my blessed water I woke up that was on a Tuesday I woke up that Sunday I didn't have the, the urge like Everything was just gone. But I still was dealing with the foreclosure on my home. So the bishop called us and there was a campaign of Israel that was going on. So he called and he, he, he let everyone know in the service, if you're looking for a change and if you're wanting something to change in your life, put your all on the altar. So I made that sacrifice. And there was a change that came in my life. I kept my home. We are no longer in foreclosure. Me and my kids are able to still enjoy our house. I received a better job. Out of that job, I was driving a truck that was having some mechanical issues. I was able to get me a new car, a better car, and to put that truck down. And me and my kids go on trips. We enjoy life. God has been good to us. I never regret putting my all on that altar. Never. I'll do it again. And uh, Leticia is one of so many true stories that faith, when it's being used, can remove mountains. You see, this woman was going through so many problems. Leticia was having difficulties even to raise her children. And you can imagine, you can see the picture of what a woman 
is going through, once is addicted and at the same time trying to do everything at the same time, raising six children and not being able. And on the top of this, the addiction there, trying to take over and destroying the small things that this person still has. You know, you may look to Letitia and you may not have six children. You may say my situation is, is not exactly the same, but it's not this the important or the main thing here. The main thing here is she was once uh, with her life stuck because of an addiction and today she got rid of it and her life is transformed. She could find a solution to this problem. You may say, Ricardo, that's not my addiction. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same addiction. What matters, and this is what I want to share with you, as Leticia could see the transformation in her life, she could, she could put an end to that suffering. You can do, you can do the same. It can happen also in your life. Even if you say, Ricardo, I tried before. I've been using whatever people have been telling me to do. I've been trying to, to use my own strength, my own effort. I, I've been using all, all the tools that are available for me. But until today, I've been uh, not able to get rid of this. It goes for one week or one month, but later on comes and comes even stronger, regardless if it's the addiction of alcohol or drugs or gambling or pornography, whatever the addiction can be. You look at yourself and you see that the only thing that has been uh, growing and becoming stronger is the strength of that addiction in your life. And you look, you see so many things that you already lost from your family, your children, your, your, the relationship that you were in, even the, the physical things, the goods you had, uh, such as house, cars, work, job, company, your own business. You are, you, you, maybe you are a very well-educated person, but one day you got involved with this addiction and even your very good education is not capable of taking you from that situation. You have very good family members, family members that they, they are willing to turn the world upside down in order to help you and to take you away of this. But because of your wrong decisions, because of what you have been doing because of this addiction, they were forced not to abandon you, but you, you end up even by yourself separating yourself from them. They want to help you, but they, they have a limit. And even their love is there, even if the willing is there, the willingness is there, they cannot help you because at the end of the day, you know, there's something within you there's, there, there, there's a, a, an evil, let's say, a strength within you that no matter how many times you say, I will stop it, I won't go back again, I will not get involved with this again, you end up going. You end up doing, you feel embarrassed with yourself, and, but you end up, end up doing it. And this is why so many times family is, is, is set aside because you see how much you are harming yourself and you are bragging your family into the same situation. And then you are there desperate because you don't, you cannot be with them because you know that you are being the cause of their suffering. But at the same time, you cry and you are desperate because you love them. You want to be close to them. You want to help them. You want to be a reference for them. But you couldn't be because of this addiction. You know, it's time for you to change. Even you say, it's a family member, Ricardo. A family member has been going through this situation, this problem, and I am the one who has been trying to help. I, uh, I am the one, I, uh, I've been even investing my personal money, my, uh, my personal savings in order to take this family member to, uh, 
treatments and to try to save him, try to save her, to remove this problem away of my family member. But uh, as you said, in this, maybe that's your reality. One day good, two, three or four, very bad. And one week, it seems that now is going to be on track and get rid of this. And then comes and the problem comes even stronger to the point that now you found yourself with no money, with no conditions, with no hope, with no strength. And even not believing that the transformation is possible. Even sometimes saying that they don't want to get rid of the problem. When they were coming to you and saying so many times, I, I want, but I cannot. And the truth is, they want. They really want to get rid, but they are out of strength. They need the strength that comes from God. And that's why I would like to say a prayer on your behalf. Before I tell you what you can do in order to solve this problem, I would like to unite my faith with yours, with you who are someone who is someone who is going through this, uh, this problem with addiction, and also with you who want to pray on behalf of a family member who unfortunately was and has been trapped by it. Let's unite our faith and pray. When you look at that bottle, when you pick up even the cigarette, you say every time you light it, I need to stop. Don't tell me you don't because you do because I used to. Every time I lit a cigarette, I said, I need to stop. Even if I didn't say the words out loud, I said it in my mind. But then I went ahead, flicked the lighter and lit it up. When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. You know, my dear Lord, it is very difficult for someone who has already spent all his money, savings. My Lord, it is very difficult for this person who has turned the world upside down in order to get rid of this addiction trying to help a family member, my God, to get rid of this addiction and with no success until now. And even it, it is even more, you know, my God, distressful when we see that all these efforts, all these works and everything that has been done, it has been useless, my God, because at the end, Everything has been lost, but the problem is still there. All the money has gone, but the addiction is still there. You know, my Lord, the family or the strength, the willingness, the, 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 you know, my Lord, the determination in helping, in trying to do something is already gone, my Lord, or is this extremely weak, but the problem is there and by the day even stronger, my Lord. And so many times people, they end up giving in to this situation saying, I cannot do anything else. I, they even believe I was born to suffer with this. And when this is not real, my Lord, you died on the cross exactly to give this woman the life that she is looking for. You died on the cross to set this man free from whatever he has been going through. So through this prayer, my Lord, I unite my faith with this person and I ask help them.
Help them because if you are not doing it, no one can, can, can do it. If you are not, my God, giving the strength, no one can give it. No one can help this person, my Lord, in removing once and for all, uprooting, my Lord, this evil that we call addiction. So in the name of Jesus, Touch this person, my Lord. Remove whatever the negative thoughts are. Remove, my God, this, uh, this negativity that always is pushing this person back into that mud that we call addictions, drugs, my God, gambling, alcohol, or whatever the suffering has been until today. My Lord, remove this negativity that always makes this person to think they need to be there. They need to go back. They need to consume. They need to drink, Lord. In the name and for the glory of Jesus, I take this evil away of this person's life. And I determine that you reach them with your power. And you give them the blessing, the strength to, my Lord, go until the end. No matter how difficult it has been or it is, you give them the strength by faith to take that step forward. And step by step, my Lord, moving forward, they will reach the deliverance, the blessing. My God, they will reach the life they have been looking for. This is what I pray and I determine in the name and for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, we, we have been... Uh, praying every day and we, ha we are having a very strong purpose of faith based in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 where it talks about the valley of dry bones and you know sometimes people they look they see their lives and when they picture what it's going on in their lives, they see themselves as a life or a valley of dry bones. They don't see a way how to get rid of this spiritual death, these problems that are consuming their lives and destroying their lives. But one day the Lord uh, took Ezekiel by the Spirit and showed him this valley of dry bones. And he asked, can, can these, bone, the, these dry bones live? And the Lord told to Ezekiel to prophesy. And according to what is written in the book of Ezekiel, immediately it starts, they start hearing the sound of the bones getting together. The body was already, was being formed again and the, it lacked the, the life, the breath of life. So the breath of life came upon these bodies and in that valley, it was raised a, new, a huge army, prepared, you know, strong. And sometimes you think, that your life because of this addiction is like that dry bone. It could be. It could be that your life, uh, it was like those dry bones. But it can also be, and this is what I believe, that as Ezekiel, God brought me here and brought me here to prophesy, to use this here. And when I say prophesy is to use what is written in his word, to believe in what is written in his word. And his word says that the dry bones, they could live again. You know, it, it means that even if you look at yourself and for that situation you are in, uh, you see that there's, there is no solution. I am here as Ezekiel to help you. I am here to help you as Letitia. Do you remember the testimony? As she was, she was helped. But in order for you to be helped, you have to be here this coming Sunday, 3 p.m. You have here, you, you must be here with me because that's the only way that I can help you. So many people, they ask, 
Uh, but isn't God everywhere? Isn't God in every place? Yes, it is. He is everywhere. But when you leave your house, when you leave the place that you are in and you are coming to us, you are manifesting your faith. You are taking steps of faith from the moment, this very moment now that you say, I'm going to be there. You are already using your faith. You are already believing that the Lord, the only God, the one that is written here in the Holy Bible, he will help you as he helped Letitia. And we, as his prophets, we are going to be here to help and to set you free from this situation that you have been living in. Believe me, it's not the end of the line. You still, you can turn these things around if you use your faith as it happened with Letitia. For more information, you can go to our website, uckg.org.au. You have our helpline center available where you can call to talk to one of our pastors and daily our church is open. Daily, since the morning, the 6.30 a.m. until late evening, we are all day long here available for you. And Sundays, 3 p.m., a special treatment for those, spiritual treatment for those who are going through an addiction. Where? I want to see you to help you. God bless you. This program is brought to you by UCKG.